Welcome to GDs. And this is, The Lincoln Lawyer, Season 1, Part 1. Season starts, with a defense lawyer Jerry Vincent, being shot dead in a parking garage by a man, and the man steals his briefcase. We then get to see another defense lawyer Mickey Holler, sitting on a shore, watching the sea, and remembering, when he nearly drowned while surfing. He gets a call from his second ex-wife Lorna, who informs him, that the preceding judge has called him into her chambers. As Mickey, visits Judge Mary Holder, she informs him, that the lawyer Jerry Vincent, has left him his entire practice. Mickey was quite surprised by this, as he and Jerry were not close. The judge asks Mickey, why he has had no case for a while. Mickey lets her know, that he had an accident, which later got him addicted to drugs. But he turned things around, went to rehab, and has been clean for a while. Knowing the same, the judge tells him, to report to her periodically, with the progress of his cases, in order for her to make sure that he is competent, and providing adequate consult to his clients. Among the cases Mickey got, he also got a high-profile case of Trevor Elliott, a video game designer, accused of murdering his wife Lara and her lover Riles. Mickey along with Lorna, who manages his practice, arrive at Vincent's office, only to find the police searching for evidence. Mickey, forces them to leave, letting them know, that the communication between attorney clients is privileged. Detective Raymond Griggs, investigating Vincent's murder, is not happy with the same, and seeing Mickey get the practice of Vincent, lets him know, that even he is a suspect. Mickey, being back in the game, asks Lorna, to hire her boyfriend Cisco, as he is a good investigator. He then goes to visit Trevor, in order to convince him, to continue with him as his lawyer. Trevor tells him, that he will not delay the trial, which starts in a week's time, as he has waited long enough to clear his name. Mickey assures him, that he will be prepared by then, but Trevor, having not heard of Mickey, is a bit skeptical. As Mickey leaves, he learns, that he has a court appearance for a client, accused of stealing a necklace. He later learns, that the accused Izzy, is also a former addict, but she managed to turn her life around. In addition, Vincent planned to get her a reduced sentence, by showcasing that she has changed, and is not the same person who tried stealing the necklace. But Mickey, was able to get the case against her dropped, as if the prosecutor went after his client, they will also have to prosecute the owner of the necklace, for insurance fraud. Mickey, having a lot of work, was looking for a driver, thus he hires Izzy as his driver, as she had no money to pay him at the moment. We later get to see his first ex-wife Maggie, and she is worried about him, knowing that he just recovered, but Lorna assures her, that she need not worry, as this will help him get back on his feet. We also get to know, that they share the custody of their teenage daughter Haley. As Mickey has dinner with his daughter, he is visited by Detective Griggs, who informs him, that Vincent was executed by a professional hitter, and he believes that it is because of one of his cases, which means, that Mickey and his family might have inherited his dangers. Though the detective pushed hard to gain access to Vincent's files, but Mickey denied him access. Though spooked by the detective, he asks Lorna to go through Vincent's files, in order to identify potential threats. Later, Mickey, and Cisco go to Trevor's house, where his wife and her boyfriend were murdered, in order to understand the case better. Being there, Cisco informs him, that Lorna and him are going to be married, and he wanted to make sure that Mickey has no issues with the same. Mickey tells him, that he is happy for them, and has no issues. He also visits Trevor again. Trevor, having looked into him, tells him, that he loved his wife, and she was everything to him. In addition, he never knew about his wife's affair, and even if he did, he would have forgiven her, as he loved her a lot. He further informs him, that he went home early that day, as he had a fight with his wife the previous night, and he wanted to surprise her, but when he reached home, he found his wife and her yoga trainer dead. Mickey, hearing his side of the story, assures him, that he can win with this, and seeing him confident, Trevor hires him. Mickey, landing one of their biggest clients was quite happy, and he informs the same to Lorna. On his way back, Izzy notices a black SUV following them, but with her driving skills, she is able to lose them. He later spots the same SUV, outside his home, but as he approaches it, it drives away. Mickey, having identified potential threats in Vincent's files, gets Judge Holder's approval, to share the same with the detective. He gives the files to the detective Griggs, and in exchange is able to learn from him, that in the days leading to Vincent being shot, he visited a casino a few times. Mickey, after going through Vincent's files, finds, that he had no apparent defense for Trevor. And with the trial approaching, he is quite frustrated by it. In addition, as Lorna looks at Vincent's account, 
she finds, a large sum of money being taken out by Vincent, as his personal expense, with no explanation. Not having anything to go on, Mickey asks Cisco to look for more information with Vincent's investigator, while Lorna, tries to find out more about Lara's boyfriend Riles, who also got shot. Mickey, handles another case, where the accused Terrell Coleman, was charged with resisting arrest, among other things. Listening to him, he was able to figure out, that the police officer who arrested him, has a grudge against him. Knowing the same, he was able to bluff off having a video from a nearby ATM, which recorded everything. The prosecutor, learning about the video, settles the case, and Mickey was able to get his client out. With his daughter Haley, seeing him argue for the first time in the courtroom. With Mickey, starting to get back on his feet, the relationship between him and Maggie, also started to improve. On the other hand, Cisco looks into Vincent's investigator, Bruce Carlin. Cisco learns from him, that Vincent took him off Trevor's case, but he was scared of something before he got shot. And he claimed to know nothing more, but Cisco felt, that he is hiding stuff from him. While Lorna, looking into the dead boyfriend, learns, that he had affairs with multiple married women. In addition, she also discovers, that Vincent drafted a motion to ask for a continuance, but never filed it, and they believe that it might be one of the things in his bag, which the shooter took. Mickey, learning this, and not having anything for defense, also wants to delay the trial. And in a conference with the judge Stanton, the prosecutor Golantz, and Trevor, he is offered a continuance by the judge, but Trevor, was not willing to delay the trial any further. He tells Mickey in private, that he has a deal on the table to license his gaming technology, but if the trial is shifted, the deal goes away, and he will lose everything. Trevor makes sure, that Mickey understands, that he only hired him, as he assured him that he will be ready. Hearing him out, Mickey refuses the continuance and wants to start the trial as per the schedule. He also has a heated debate with the prosecutor, as he brings up his competence, since he has been an addict. But the judge warns Golantz, not to do so again. As Mickey returns to the office, he learns from Vincent's receptionist, that Vincent told her, that he had a magic bullet, which will blow the prosecutor's case. Learning this, Mickey was quite confident, that they will also be able to find the magic bullet, which Vincent found. Later, as Mickey leaves the office, we learn, that his car has been bugged, and the man in the black SUV has been listening to him. On the other hand, we also get to see Maggie, who is a prosecutor, questioning a witness about a businessman named Angelo Soto, before a grand jury, and she is being assisted by Detective Lee Langford, in her case against Soto. Detective Lee, learning that Maggie used to be married to Mickey, was quite surprised, and we learn, that Detective Lee, and Mickey, don't like each other. Later, as they go to arrest Soto, Lee reveals to Maggie, that he knows Mickey, from supervising the case of Jesu Menendez, a man Mickey represented, who supposedly killed several prostitutes. Meanwhile, Mickey learns, that he is supposed to represent Eli Wims, one of Vincent's clients. But his file was not in the office. At Wims' hearing, Mickey finds, that he is unresponsive, as he is under heavy medication. He also learns, that Vincent took his case pro bono, and was arrested for firing multiple rounds at the police. Mickey, gets quite puzzled, on why Vincent took this case. Nevertheless, he was able to get a continuance on the case, so that his client can be taken off drugs, which will allow him to consult with his client, in order to negotiate a deal. Griggs, shows Mickey a surveillance photo of a man, from the parking garage, on the night Vincent was killed, wanting to know, if he knows him. Mickey lets him know, that he has never seen the guy. Later, as he returns to the office, Cisco shows him evidence, which proved, that Vincent was not gambling at the casino, but was instead meeting with someone. Cisco also lets him know, that Vincent's investigator is missing, and it seems he is afraid of whoever killed Vincent. Cisco, in order for Mickey, to have protection, leaves a gun in the office. Mickey asks Trevor, to show him everything that happened the day he found his wife dead. As Trevor went through everything, Mickey was able to figure out, that he knew about his wife's affair. As Mickey questions him on the same, he lets him know, that he never told him this before, as he knew how it looks, but he had no issues with the same, as he had been unfaithful before, and wanted to make things right with his wife. On the other hand, Lorna investigating Riles, meets with Carol Dubois, one of the wives with whom he slept. Talking with her, Lorna learns, that she cared about Riles a lot. In addition, she learns from her, that Riles also had an affair with Nima Shaver. Cisco, looking into Nima Shaver, learns, that his ex-husband Anton, is the head of a security company, that caters to off-book clientele, 
and he informs the same to Mickey. Mickey, despite Izzy's objection, goes to a bar, for Vincent's memorial. Being there, he runs into Detective Lee, who taunts him over losing Jesu Menendez's case. Being reminded of the same, he gets close to losing his sobriety, but Izzy, being there, is able to help him choose a better way. Mickey shares with Izzy, that he lost the case of Jesu Menendez, after a witness disappeared, and having no other defense, he had to plead him out. And soon after, he met an accident. Thus he feels guilty, that he was not able to look out for him, and this triggered him at the bar. Knowing this, Izzy wants him to attend a meeting, but Mickey brushes her off. Mickey, returns to office, and starts looking at everything they had on the Trevor's case, hoping to find the magic bullet. It is when he notices, that Wims was arrested only miles away from Trevor, and that too on the same day. And he thinks, that his case might be the magic bullet that Vincent might be referring to. As Mickey gets out of the office, he finds, that the man whose photo detective Griggs showed him, was waiting for him in the parking lot. He chases Mickey back to his office. Mickey, in order to scare him off, shoots with Cisco's gun, and calls the detective. As Detective Griggs reaches there, he tells Mickey, that no one is around anymore, and Mickey shares with him, that he thinks the man who killed Vincent, stole Trevor's defense. As he talks with the detective, he realizes, that the surveillance photo, and the suspect, which the detective showed him, were fake, as he wanted to scare him into talking. While the detective, realizing that Mickey knows nothing, and they found no leads in the files he shared, wants to use him as a bait, in order to draw out the real killer. Mickey, thinking that catching the killer, might help him with Trevor's case, agrees to do so, and he announces in the press, that all of Vincent's files, were backed up to an external hard drive, which he now has. He later goes to meet with Wims, but he refuses to tell him anything, until Mickey gets him a deal. Knowing the same, he is able to negotiate a deal with the opposing counsel, at Haley's soccer game. Wims, having a deal, agrees to talk to him, but he has no idea who Trevor is, and knows nothing about his case. Trevor, also didn't know anything about Wims, or any connection he has with his case. Mickey, not having any defense, and seeing Trevor's intent for not delaying the trial, is quite puzzled. As he returns, he receives a call from Bruce, as he saw him on the news. He tells him, that he does not know about Wims, but agrees to meet him, provided he comes alone. As Mickey reaches the location to meet him, Bruce tells him, that he had been followed, and doesn't show up. Cisco, knowing for sure they were not followed, thinks that they might have been bugged, and as he looks, he finds a bug in Mickey's car. Mickey, decides to leave the bug, in order to avoid tipping off the ones, who are watching him. Lorna going through Vincent's files, was able to figure out the identity, which Bruce might be using, and Cisco was able to track him down, but before he could approach him, he dies in an accident. On the other hand, Maggie, is not able to stop the court, from granting bail to Soto, and she is not happy with the same. Her witness, getting to know the same, also becomes unwilling to cooperate, but Maggie is able to convince him, to do the right thing. But later she learns, that her witness was murdered. Seeing her mother being upset, Haley calls Mickey. And as he comes over to support her, they share an intimate moment. Mickey, in order to not lose the progress he made in his life, decides to attend an AA meeting with Izzy. Maggie's superior, Janelle Simmons, who is running for DA against incumbent Robert Cardone, tells her, to either prove Soto killed the witness, or drop the charges against him. Maggie, building the case against Soto for more than a year, was not willing to give up. Thus, Maggie along with Detective Lee, attempts to use Tanya Cruz, Soto's pregnant girlfriend, to get to him. Maggie convinces her, to help them take down Soto, and refers her to Mickey, if she needs her own defense lawyer. She later informs Mickey about Tanya, and also tells him, that their intimate moment was a mistake. On the other hand, Cisco looking into Nima Shaver, found out that Riles got a restraining order against her husband Anton Shaver, two months before his death, but it was not granted, as Riles didn't go to the hearing. And in order to have more on Anton, Cisco approaches Nima. But she was not willing to talk. Though, this resulted in Anton, threatening him, and Cisco records the same. With the trial date approaching, the jury selection process starts. Mickey, wants to hire a jury consultant, but Trevor, wanting to restore his image in public, was not willing to do so. Which forces Mickey to hire an old friend, to look at the jury discreetly. Mickey, seeing Izzy upset, learns from her, that her ex-girlfriend is using again, and she was the one who got her hooked on drugs in the first place. He also gets a visit from the road saints. It is when we learn, 
that Cisco used to be one of their members, and he was only able to leave them, as Mickey offered Saints his services. At the courthouse, as the jury selection process began, Trevor, demanded to be part of it. Mickey with his final strike, wanted to cut jury number 7, but Trevor was against it, and forced Mickey to change his choice. Later at his house, Mickey is approached by Detective Griggs, who informs him, that on the day Vincent took out a large amount of money, Bruce made a delivery to someone, and it may have been for a bribe for Trevor's case. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please subscribe.